everybody, I'm Kelly Hydebrader and this is Lenaway. Are you ready to take a tour around Lenaway County to see some amazing things going on in our classrooms? Well, Madison students show off some of their experiments at their science fair and we get a behind the scenes look at the cast performing the Wizard of Oz at Hudson High School. Our culinary students show you the right way to blanch your vegetables and the Better Business Bureau will help you find a good remodeler and you get in the front row in the seat of the Lenaway County Special Olympics. But before we take you there, grab your hammer. The construction students show you how to install a window. <laughs> Hello, I am Martel Pizzagna and I am from Britain Deerfield High School and Nate here is going to be talking about how to install a window. Hi, I'm Nate Carr. I'm also from Britain Deerfield High School. I'm a senior in residential construction here at the Tech Center. And when you start building your window, you're going to want to make sure that your whole window is square and the framing is level because if not, your window is going to be completely off. And then next, we have uh, tape made specifically by Pella, which is the company doing our windows today and it's thinner than any other tape that you'll find on at Home Depot or Lowe's or any of those so it's nice to place down it rips easily you don't have to cut it with a knife or anything and you basically place this out it comes one inch over the edge there at the bottom and this tape helps uh, water to run off the edge because no matter what you do you're gonna be getting water in your w inside of your window and this is a good way to get it out going out of the bottom after that step, you're going to get caulk adhesive uh, and you're going to run it up the sides and the top and on your, on your window, on your basic window, you'll have metal flaps that come out with holes for your nails, for your finished nails and those are going to go in and you're going to place the metal, the metal comes out to about right here and you're going to place the metal on the outside and the, the caulk is going to stick to the metal and that's basically what's going to hold your, hold your window on, also your nails. The next step is after you nail down the metal to the, the caulk is underneath, you're going to nail down the metal that comes out of your window. All right. Now that we've talked about taping and caulking, now we're going to be installing the window. But before we do that, we have to talk about how to install the shims. Absolutely. So we have these composite shims here. They're pretty strong. Uh, they, we used to use wood shims, but they press down over time because wood can, it doesn't hold up very well. So they created these. You're going to want to set this about an inch over. And this, these are going to help support the whole window and put its pressure points on these areas. And this is a double window. So you're going to want to put one about an inch over right here. And then the other two, these are going to set right in the middle. And then you're, the center of your window is going to come down right in between those. So the, most of the pressure is being put on these shims. And also we're going to have one over here to support the other corner of the window. Now that we've gone through the prepping steps, uh, Nate here is going to be telling us how to uh, actually install the window and go through the final steps. All right, so as you can see, we need a lot of helpers to put in that. It's a big window and uh, afterwards, after you get the window in, make sure it's square, make sure the shims are set and it's placed in there nicely. Uh, we're going to use this quad foam and it actually you fill in the gaps and the foam actually expands and this is the tool they use that they connect onto the bottle right here and the foam actually expands for about a minute and then stops so your window is sealed all the way around and after that you're going to want to uh, after your drywall is put up on all your walls you're going to do interior trim around the window to cover up those gaps and all the foam that you filled in all right now that's how you install a window i am martel pizzagna i'm nate carr and we are here at the seed house and we are bringing it to you Great job, guys. These students are also helping build a new classroom at our Tipton Road campus called the Seed House, and it's built with the latest green technology. Are you ready to be amazed by Madison Elementary School students? Our LSPN Sports Director, Miguel Gaetan, took a tour there. Let's check out their science fair. Yeah, thanks, Kelly. We're here at Madison Elementary School, and we got word that there's some scientific savvy students that like to show off their scientific skills. Let's go on. Let's check it out. Come on. Why did you make Play-Doh? Um, so we could see how um, we like, t 
to see how like it turned out. What did you learn about Play-Doh besides that it being kind of difficult to make? That sometimes it could be graining and salty and sometimes it could stick to you. I made my boat out of plastic right here on the bottom with hot glue to tape it to um, glue it down. And I'd use this out of a pop box, Coca-Cola box and for the sail so it can get wind. And I hot glued these um, things around it so it can look like a boat. Fourth grade did bridges. There were some tests that our bridges needed to pass, like um, a barge needs to go under it, and then we needed to put some weights on it too. Every bridge is unique. Um, it may not be new, unique to everybody else, but it's always unique to the people who build it. The fifth grade made parachutes. We used a, um, a coffee filter and we put uh, um, some cord or rope or whatever you're going to use and we taped it to the sides or to four corners of it and then we tied a knot in it and put a load which would be like a human in real life if you were going skydiving or whatever but in this case we just used a paper clip. We learned about um, different canopy sizes and how the canopy size affects how fast or slow the parachute goes. So the large canopy size, which we used an 18 inch coffee filter, went slow because it had a lot of air going into the canopy, which creates drag, and the air creates drag, which causes the parachute to slow down. Nice job, kids. I really like that story, Miguel. And of course, I always learn a lot. Ready to do some cooking? Well, grab a pencil and paper. Our culinary students will show you how to whip up the perfect side dish. But you gotta wait about 30 seconds. Bummer. Stay right there. It's time for You Lost Your Life with your host, Christ Dummies, Vince and Larry. Hey! Hello! <laughs> and welcome to the show that proves if you don't buckle your safety belt, the loser is you. That's right, Vince, and by not buckling up, you could end up in places you never dreamed. Like correction! Or the emergency room! Plus, Larry, if you're not buckled up, you could maybe take a ride in a beauty like this. Stay tuned! You've learned a lot from a devil. Buckle your safety belt. Hey, welcome back. Well, what are you making for dinner tonight? Does it include a nice side dish of vegetables? Our culinary students show you the proper technique to blanch them perfectly. Hi, my name is Courtney Reynolds. This is my second year in culinary arts and I go to Adrian High School. I'm gonna show you how to blanch vegetables. So with broccoli, it takes out the chlorophyll and it keeps them fresh and brings out color. Um, the water has to be boiling, so it'll go a lot faster. And then you take it out. And you have to put it in ice water to shock it. It'll stop the cooking process. Same thing with carrots, it'll do the same thing. Uh, after you blanch them, you can fry them, saute them, pretty much anything you wanna do. Carrots take a little bit longer because they're a lot more dense. So when they're done, they'll start to get a brighter color. Then you have to shock them too. So you have to shock them until they start to get cold. And that's how you blanch vegetables and you're catching them in the classroom. Well, did you get all of those steps? It looks easy to me. Do you need to have some big projects done around the house? It's important to pick the right contractor for the remodeling job. The Lenawee County Better Business Bureau will help you zero in on a quality builder right after this. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds.
Welcome back. Well, do you need to remodel the bathroom or maybe add on a deck or finish the basement? These are all projects that will add value to your home, but make sure you pick the right contractor or your finances will be the next thing that need fixing up. Dick Epstein of the Lenawee County Better Business Bureau can help. There are so many things we want to do around the house, fix up the house, and uh, the most common call we get is about roofing. Uh, in this market, but uh, people put windows in, they put siding, they put all kinds of uh, improvements on their home, and that's wonderful. They increase the value of the home, they increase the comfort of the home, they add space to the home. I mean, a good remodeler can do wonders for your home. The rule begins with who you hire. You've got to hire a good remodeler, and there are a ton of guys out there I've never heard of, BBB has never heard of them, they're not members of PRO, the Professional Remodelers Organization. They may be very good, they may be terrible. And there's some terrible ones out there, I guarantee you. If you hire a good, reputable contractor, one who's established in business, there are certain things you get as an advantage. Number one is, you're hiring a contractor who's got a track record. You can check with BBB, with PRO, see that, see that the contractor does what he promises. Secondly, a good established contractor has insurance. That's important. He has workers comp. That's really important. If you hire a contractor, and I've seen these complaints here at BBB, where somebody hires a contractor, he doesn't have workers comp, he's working illegally, well, he's cheap, but then his guy falls off your roof and there's no insurance and they come back on you as the homeowner. If you hire an unlicensed contractor, you become the general contractor and you're liable. Get everything in writing, exactly what they will do and what they won't do. One of the big problems we run into is that a consumer will get a couple of estimates and they'll be confused as to which estimate offered which products or which services. Some contractors say, well, we'll do this or we'll do that. And the, con the customer gets confused because it's not in writing. And then when the job is done, the customer comes back to BBB and says, he didn't do X or he didn't do Y. Well, wait a minute, that was the other guy. That wasn't the one you talked to that, that you hired. So get everything in writing. If you just hire cheap, it's gonna look cheap. And you're gonna be looking at that for 10 years and saying, oh man, I wish I'd have paid a little more and got it done right. Well, if you want to contact the Lenawee County Better Business Bureau, go to their website at bbb.org, or you can call them at 419-720-7188. Well, if you have a junior in high school, it's time to start looking at colleges. We'll help you in your hunt right after this. Right, mi cariño. So like I said, everything I learned about cooking, I learned from grandma's empanadas. Shall we go again? Yep. Mix beef with the onions, the onions with the peppers, the peppers with the paprika, the paprika with the garlic, the garlic with the oregano, the oregano with the cumin. Got it? Got it. Throw in the olive, stir, season, stir again, pour out the flour, roll out the dough, make a circle, drop in a fistful of filling, fold over, press down, and ta-da! Hmm. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. If you think you're going to college, there's a lot to do. Juniors are taking their entrance exams and will use those scores to help them snag scholarships and get into their favorite colleges. But there's a lot to do on that list. Our counselor here at the LASD Tech Center, Mary Tomlin, will help you walk right through it. Mary Tomlin and I am a counselor at the LISD Tech Center. I thought I'd talk to juniors today in high school on some ideas that they can use to kind of spring ahead into college readiness. Yes, we are in the spring of the year and March, April is a busy time for high school juniors. They've just completed their ACT test. There are some important things that a junior needs to do yet this year before they leave school in June to be ready for their college application process. The first one is testing. Yes, I know, you have just completed the ACT test. It is not a bad idea to try to sign up for an ACT or an SAT in June 
or in September. You can go on the actual website and take a look at the dates and get registered. Advantage of doing this, usually each time you take the test, you can do a little bit better. If you get a 27 or higher, that opens the door for many scholarships for you. Also, colleges like to look at improved ACT scores and that you've made an effort to take it besides the time that it was offered for free. Other things to do. Before you leave school, you must obtain your junior transcripts. That means your completed semester or trimester freshman through junior year transcripts. The reason you'll want to obtain this is that information will be used for your college application. So if you get this as soon as your uh, credits are done for this year and before your counselors leave for summer, you'll have that tool as you start to apply. You should apply for colleges over summer vacation when you have less on your plate. You can then be considered for early scholarship opportunities and early enrollment. You can also obtain letters of references from that teacher who knows to speak of you and, and what kind of student you are, from your counselor, from that coach or class advisor or some organization that you've been in. Most colleges ask for letters of recommendation. As always, before you ask someone to do a letter for you of recommendation, you will want to prepare an accomplishment sheet. That would be the kinds of things that you have done, the kinds of classes that you have taken, the kind of extracurricular things you've been in, awards you've won, community service that you have accomplished. That will be used to the people who are writing the reference letter for you so that they can generate the best possible letter. You can then send that in along with your college application. I'd like to say that LCAN and the Community Foundation is putting together, or the Youth Council, a series of amazing opportunities which you can go with other Lenawee County students to visit particular colleges. They have one on April 6th, which is over your spring break. Uh, they have some on April 25th, June 10th, and then there's another one on July 29th. So this might be a really good thing for you to do. You and your parents can also schedule a visit to go at any time to find out what are the application requirements, what do they look for for your ACT or SAT score, and what things do they have from your transcripts that they would like you to improve upon. Please, if you have not done so already, make your social media sites private. Uh, a lot of colleges look at these sites and uh, they look at uh, the information that you put on and whatnot. So it's very important to maybe even change your social media name. Take on a leadership role. You don't have to be the president of a national honor society or the secretary of your class. Maybe there's a leadership role that you could do at the fair. Maybe you could volunteer for Habitat for Humanity over the summer and actually organize something for them. Maybe you could work at the Humane Society as a volunteer. If you don't have a lot of those leadership activities, Please do that over the summer so that you can write about some unique experience that you've had. Tech Center students, don't forget to use your organization that you have been in as part of your Tech Center class. Those lift you above other students because you've actually done some preparation for your career. Plan a powerful summer. That means test review. That means maybe taking the ACT or SAT again. That means having some volunteer and leadership projects. And it also means writing strong essays, uh, visiting colleges, and getting your application done. Lastly, I'd like to say, as you develop your senior schedule, be sure not to go light. Colleges want to look for a rigorous senior schedule, not one that is kind of laid back and doesn't have as demanding of classes. Um, surely take the heavy academics at your local school and partner it maybe with an LISD tech class in a career of interest area for you so that you can begin to write some unique things. I recently talked to a college admissions counselor for U of M who suggested that students in their essays really write about what they've done to research their career or to lift themselves up a little bit by a unique experience. Well, that about sums it up for how to spring ahead into college readiness. Thank you.
Well, if you have some questions, this is how you can reach Mary. Her email is marytomlin at lasd.us or give her a call at 517-265-1672. Well, do you have to write everything down before it slips your mind? I know I do. Our school nurse gives you some tips on that right after this. Did you write that down? Body language can tell you all sorts of things. Like someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. Face drooping, arm weakness, speech difficulty. Time to call 911 and get them to a hospital immediately. Learn the body language and spot a stroke fast. Did you know your brain needs a good workout to keep your memory sharp? There are foods that you can eat that will help you store more upstairs too. Our school nurse, Mary Markle, tells you more in Wellness 101. Hi everyone, I'm Mary Markle, the school nurse here at the Lenaway Intermediate School District. We want you and your family to be healthy so your kids stay active, in school, and you are feeling good and happy. I'm sure many of you write things down often because you tend to forget things often. We need to exercise our minds just like we exercise our bodies. Several new studies are showing how the process of creating and capturing memories in our brain is really complicated. So our brain needs a workout to maintain and retrieve those memories. These studies further show that keeping your mind active will minimize memory loss and dementia. An added bonus we're finding out is that physical activity helps preserve memory as well. So work this into your daily routine. Check out all the apps that are available for your phone, work on puzzle books, or take a five minute walk. Try to exercise your brain every day, if you can remember. I'm Mary Markle, be well. Okay, can't forget those tips. If you'd like to contact her, just email her at marymarkle at lisd.us or give her a call at 517-265-1689. When we come back, we'll take you down the yellow brick road and this time it goes right through Hudson High School. May I please have an application? Thank you. Skip the drama. Get your diploma. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. Well, Dorothy and Toto are taking a stroll down the yellow brick road at Hudson High School. We got to meet some of the cast and talk to their music director to see what it's like behind the curtain on the way to see the wizard. I'm Jeanette High. I'm a senior here at Hudson High School and this is my fourth year doing play and this year we're doing Wizard of Oz and um, along with being in the play every year I've also done been a part of making the costumes and the set and different things and so like this is our, our flying monkey costumes that we're going to be using this year that also made an appearance last year. That's something that's really interesting about our Hudson play that we kind of retire costumes and we'll just keep using them for different parts like um, some of the stuff up here is from when we did Beauty and the Beast and we've, we're reusing all of our costumes and we reuse our set pieces too, we'll just rebuild them. Um, something interesting about our play is that we don't cut, we make sure that we keep everybody in the play as long as they're interested and they come continually come to practice and show that they're interested in the play. Uh I love the play because we, I do my best to work around my athlete schedules. Um, so it brings academics, athletics, um, and people that just are very artistic, the band and the orchestra and the fine arts all together. And people who don't really spend that time, social time outside of class together, this is their chance. So it's like a melting pot and I just love that. Um, every year, all four years of high school, I've tried out for the play and with Mrs. Schoonover, she doesn't cut anyone from the play. She'll manage to find you 
something to do on the stage or if you don't want to do that you can always help backstage and I've always been on the stage in the chorus or this year actually having my own lines. Who rang that doorbell? Well, that, that's about all I know. I haven't memorized them yet, but thank you. The inspiration that I have is to try and be as good as the movie because so many people have seen it, so we want to be able to try and top that. There were um, 60 kids that um, auditioned, auditioned, um, did the parts placement for the play. All of them will be on stage if they want to be. Plus, we have people who just want to do makeup, do the tech crew. So it takes probably about a quarter or more of our school population, our student population. So it's pretty awesome. Actually, this year we're um, doing an alumni dedication. We're dedicating the show because so many of my alumni are mad at me for doing Wizard of Oz without them. Um, so we are going to spotlight them in the pre-show. I'm excited about that. Um, and actually, I don't know if they've inspired, if I've inspired them, but they certainly have me. Every year I come in here and I just see all the ghosts of all the plays. My name is Kara Murray and I'm a sophomore at Hudson High School. I'm the lead in the play. I'm Dorothy. I've never been in a play before, but now I have the lead and it's really exciting. I had to try out in front of four of the staff members here. One of them being Mrs. Schoonover, the director the uh, woman in charge and also my English teacher and it was pretty nervous because I've never done anything like that before but it was fun they made it really really fun we've really been working on the music today actually is the first day I'll work on dancing and choreography but we've really been working on all the group songs and harmonies and such it just it's being part of the group and having fun and meeting people and just working towards that common goal of making a really nice show for everyone. The legacy of this year's play. I'm hoping, I mean this, this really struck me last year watching the finale and I hope that everyone um, this year with our seniors realize that everyone has something that they can do and we can all come together. Um, even going far back as the alumni, because we're honoring them this year. The musical was great, and what a huge hit. What a great group of young actors we have at Hudson High School. Are you ready for a trip to the Olympics? You won't need your passport for this one, but you might need some tissues. These athletes are incredible. It's right after this. Rosita? Mm -hmm. Did you know there's a right way to sneeze? Let's show them in Yeah, mm -hmm. got it. When you feel like your nose needs to give it at you, this is how you act, this is what you do. Lift your arm up high, bend it toward your face. Sneeze right there in the dirty place. A chill, a chill. You can do it for me. A chill, a chill. That's the right way to sneeze. Thank you. To learn more about preventing flu, visit flu.gov. There are athletes that rise to the toughest challenge, break through their fears, and step up to the starting line to give everything they have. And I mean everything. These are the athletes of the Lenawee County Special Olympics. What a wonderful day in Lenawee County. We are seeing some of the best, some of the most special athletes, the Special Olympics here at the Siena Heights Fieldhouse. I've got Barb Smith with us this morning, and she is one of the organizers of this event and also a Civitan. Barb, tell me what's going to happen today. Uh, this is the day to shine for these kids who will never probably be their school's star athlete. They'll never really get to fully participate in a field day but this is their day to be the star. This is the 45th annual Special Olympics held in this county. We'll have track and field 100 yard and 50. We have wheelchair races and motorized activities. We have broad jump. We have putt putt golf. And we have to watch because sometimes they'll get a little carried away and they don't stay on the ground. And we've got softball. 
and we've got such enthusiasm we and we've it. got kids that will push themselves harder than any kid could ever push themselves before. That's right and they they leave with a smile hopefully and lots of ribbons and we hope that they have fond memories. We've got approximately 225 today and uh, some years it's as high as 300. It depends on if the kids are doing well physically or if they're ill. We've got such a festive crowd today, Barb. What do you say? Let the games begin. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the 2015 Special Olympics. Let me win. Let me win. But if I cannot win. But if I cannot win. Let me be brave. Let me be brave. In the temperate. In the attempt, let Let's the game, game begin! begin. <laughs> the best part is Festival Olympics. I go every year. Um, I don't miss Festival Olympics. This was my best. My Festival Olympics did awesome today. We pick events that um, typically they would do at state events, and then we time them and put them in heats. So we have long jump and 50 and 100 meter dash. We have developmental activities, softball, and then we have golf, which this year is a, just a participation event. When we're outside, we do chipping, and they can get a ribbon for that. You go to Adrian High School. Yeah. Yeah. What are you going to do? The uh, And you're going to run real fast? Yeah. Are you pretty excited? Yeah. Are we going to cheer for her? Yeah. What do you stand behind her cheer for? Ready? One, two, three, five. They're just so thankful for a day that showcases their children who typically don't get to participate in sports at school, and so it's just a joy to watch everyone come and do their best and be celebrated. I be doing the softball, I mean the softball pro and 100 meter dash and it starts, the 100 meter dash starts us at 11.30 and I just want to support the Michigan Special Olympics and the Hope Community Center and all my friends around here. Tell me how it feels to be an athlete in today's event. Oh, just great. It makes me feel great. It makes me feel proud inside. And when you get done, the best part, what is that? Let us be brave and yet yet if we don't win. Sometimes everybody gets a ribbon or some kind of a medal, though. Tell me about that. We get the ribbons for all of us athletes, and also sometimes we get medals. But you know what? It's just for fun. And you have so many people around here. You've been smiling at everybody yes. you see. Tell me how you feel today. I feel great, and I feel happy okay. inside. Go! Kevin, tell me a little bit about Courtney's in the games today and how important that is for the family. Well, the Special Olympics are very important to all of us and seeing Courtney out here compete with her buddies from Hope Center and ATSS is just a joy to watch. She's very outgoing and friendly and, and she just has that smile that attracts everybody to her. And, and uh, if you get to know Courtney, then you get a hug, right? And, and you know that as well as anybody. So she's just a very loving and, and caring individual. And Tell me about the softball throw, how'd you do? I got in first place. What's the funnest part about being here today? All the fun. This is a very nice day at, um, for the athletes. It brings out, it makes them so happy just to be here and it's a very, very nice day. First place, she got a gold. <laughs> what does it do for Jalen though when she's she's proud of herself? Look she's at her go. <laughs> Congratulations, honey. She's having, she's having yeah. fun. You got lots of friends here, don't you, honey? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, look at my happy tears. My happy tears. <laughs> I just want to say, all you guys, my family, my friends from the Hope Community Center, everybody in Lenawee County, thank you very much. Yeah, I'm looking forward to doing next year again. That was such a great day, truly amazing. Well, that's our show, and thanks for sharing your time with us. If you see something amazing going on right here in Lenawee County, we want to know about it. Email us at lasdtv at lasd.us. I'm Kelly Heidbrader, your host. Make it a great day, Lenawee.